It's been a really wonderful meditation to just like tune in to the master teacher, Jesus. You know, one of the teachings that he brought was the teaching of oneness. And we all know and have had that experience of separation. Or maybe as we were growing up, we were given the vision of God as something outside of ourselves, something uh, that we can't really be one with. But Jesus broke that pattern. He really brought it. In fact, even in the Lord's Prayer, if you think about it, <clears throat> the two words that, that claim it is our Father. He didn't say, my Father, who art in heaven. He said, our Father, which points us in, in this reality that he was representing of that we are one. We are one family. We are part of, of this infinite creator, and it is a part of us. I want to share a, a quote here from the uh, book of John. And just a pre, before I share the quote, just thinking about what was happening in this individual's world at the time. You know, he knew what was coming. And this is a prayer, and it's sometimes referred to in the Christian faith as the prayer of oneness. Um, but as I meditated on it, because I was... I really wanted to catch the essence of these words, so I'm going to share them with you. Neither pray I for these alone, and he's talking about his disciples, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they shall be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. I read this over many times and tuned into this um, prayer, prayer and felt this being reaching out beyond time. So he was blessing his disciples like, yes, may they remember what I showed them, what I taught them, what I brought for them. May they be that. May they remember their oneness and may everyone that they touch know that too. And I felt that like this reality that we're a part of that. We're a part of that. In our living, as we speak words of oneness, as we pray words of oneness, that we have the capacity to ignite that remembering in others. And in the last part of that verse, I love this because I know on some level we've all had to deal with this, this feeling of maybe not being loved or not being lovable, like I'm not worthy. But he says there in his last words is like, let them know that you love them as much as you love me, as much as you love me. I love that about Jesus's message because even though in some ways the Christian religion has distorted some things that made it seem like he was like unique, that none of what he showed us, what he demonstrated was for us, really. It's like through his dying, we, we get saved. It's like, no, he was there to show us that we are one and that we are loved, that we were loved so much that he chose that incarnation for himself to be an example to reveal oneness in his life and to bring us the good news, which was that we are one, we are love, we are Christ consciousness here in the process to remember ourselves.